Welcome to SALT. SALT is a teaching ministry of Vernon Park Church of God. And uh, doing this in this ministry, we present a Sunday school at a glance using UMI Digital Precepts for Living. And so my name is Minister Cassandra Ward, and I'm going to be giving you our Sunday school lesson at a glance today. So I'm glad that you joined me. And if you're going to want to follow along with me, I'm going to be reading um, Revelation 21, 9 through 21, if you want to get your Bibles and follow along. Okay, so now before we jump in, let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us eternity. Thank you for giving us a city, a new city, um, a new city inside of heaven, Lord God. And we thank you and we honor you and we praise your name. Amen. Amen. Well, if someone were to ask you to describe heaven, how would you describe heaven? I don't know. How, how would you describe heaven? Um, I'm reminded, uh, when I think about heaven, I'm reminded of a, a story that my sister-in-law, her name was Dorothy Cook, and she died six years ago. And I'm reminded that when we were at her homegoing celebration, funeral, funeral service, her pastor said that he was visiting with her at home, and she said to him, I want to go home. And he, he said, well, we are at home. So Dorothy had to be talking about going to her heavenly home, heaven. So again, that's what we're going to be talking about today, heaven. So... Again, our text is coming from Revelation chapter 21, verses 9 to 21. And the aim, the aim that we want to glean from our summary today is the possibility of living in a new place. We're going to imagine the richness and serenity of living in the new Jerusalem and then celebrate God's provision of a new city for believers throughout eternity. And I think that we might be able to relate to a new city, a new home, serenity. You may have, you know, think about if you've moved into a new home that you purchased uh, or praise God if someone blessed it and gifted it to you. And maybe a new city that you went to. But as you were looking for this new home and this new city, you thought that you want something that's serene, that's peaceful, that's just beautiful, that's beautifully adorned, you know? And so here in our lesson today, that's the vision that John saw as he got the vision of a new city, a new Jerusalem a home for believers. All right, so let's just jump in now and uh, let's go through our scripture verses. And so our first set of verses are going to come from Revelation 21, 9 to 11, and it reads as such. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came and said to me, come with me. I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. And so the key point that we're going to pull from these verses is, what is it, John? What did we hear? Yes, the beautiful bride. So the apostle John describes the church as the bride. John saw the holy sitter in its entire splendor 
and he likened it to a bride adorned for her husband. And so I want to pull in the peace of the husband, Christ as the husband. Revelation 12, 2 reads, And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The definition for bride from our lesson, bride means a betrothed or newly married young woman. It signifies the close relationship between Christ and the church. And bride also refers to the holy to the holy Jerusalem, the city of God. And so God is showing us his great love for us. Can you see it here how much he loves us? Oh, how much he loves us. Our second set of scripture comes from verses 12 through 17. The city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. When he measured it, he found it was a square as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1400 miles then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick according to the human standards uh, used by the angel now one commentary i read said one wall is farther than the distance between new york and miami and so the heavenly city that John saw is a picture of perfection. God loved us so much. He did all of this for us. It has perfect dimensions, beautifully adorned. The city is protected with high fortified walls. The city is filled with God's presence. Uh, the 12 gates to the city are covered by 12 angels, we read. And this is to ensure the city remains pure and unspoiled. And then the 12 gates echo the 12 gates in Ezekiel's new city, which represents the 12 tribes of Israel and the complete inclusion of God's people. And you can read that in Ezekiel 48, 30 through 35. And then uh, our lesson brings out that the number 12 can signify human government. It is a perfect number symbolizing God's power and authority. The number 12 is found 187 times in the Bible and the most prominent is used for the 12 tribes of Israel. But then we also have 12 apostles, 12 memorial stones found in Exodus 28, 21, 12 unleavened loaves in the tabernacle, Leviticus 24, 5 through 6, you will see that. And so 12 apostles. So what is an apostle? A definition from our lesson says, an apostle, God's messengers who encountered Christ, planted churches, and ministered to the new church. And so what's our key point from these verses? This beautiful foundations. I mean, just look at how the foundation was built. All that uh, John is describing for us. So now let's read our third set of verses and our final set. 
The wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold as clear as glass. Did you catch that? The city was pure gold as clear as glass. Now we know glass is not clear, right? But I think that it was just indescribable. Just words just could not find to describe how John wanted to describe this to us. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones inlaid with 12 precious stones. The first was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third a gate, the fourth Emerald, the fifth Onyx, the sixth Carnelian, the seventh Crystal Light, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth Chrysoprase, the eleventh Jacinth, the twelfth Amethyst. And then the twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, each gate from a single pearl, the Bible emphasizes. And the main street was pure gold as clear as gas, as clear as glass. So in this set of verses, John describes parts of the city both as being made of gold and being clear as glass. And now our commentary says, there is no such thing as transparent gold. So we imagine John is using figurative language to try to describe just how amazing and wonderful this site must be, which I kind of noted earlier. So beautiful and amazing, no words to adequately describe the glory of this heavenly city. And now, also we see how prominent uh, the number 12 is because it was once used again, the 12 gates, right? So, all right. Um, and then John goes on to describe the city gate, the city walls and gates, and he took time to precisely name the stones of each foundation layer. Amen, amen. And these 12 stones John named are meant to remind his audience of the 12 stones on the high priest's breastplate, Exodus 28, 17 through 20. The color of the stone is consistent, although they are represented in a different order and some names have changed. And you know, what I really want to emphasize as he's naming the, uh, giving us the name and the foundation is, uh, let's go back to verse 12, where he says, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. A single pearl. Every several gate was one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold. And so I want to read what our um, author said about the pearls in, in our lesson. The city gates, however, are made of pearl, an item that's the, that does not need to be polished or cut. Even though pearls we know on earth are small, the largest one recorded is only two feet long and one foot wide. These pearls are big enough to carve out an entire city gate. That is amazing, miraculous. This is where the image of heaven's pearly gates come from. It is all one piece complete one piece complete symbolizing the church's purity and then finally john remarks on the city streets which are pure gold the gold reminds us of how rich and extravagant all of heaven is the purity like the wholeness of the gates of pearl reminds us of how christ's bride the church me and you the holy city has been cleaned of all fault and blemish by the grace of God. This pure gold, however, is also transparent like glass, reminding John's audience of the brightness of God 
and the commentary ends with, nothing in the holy city will obscure God's brilliant glory. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all, now we know how to describe heaven. A new city, a new Jerusalem. So, praise God and thank you for joining us um, as you have viewed this um, summary on a new city. And we invite you right now uh, to sow into our ministry. And if you would look on the screen, there are ways that you can sow into the ministry if you would choose to do so. And so we just thank you again for being with us. Thank you for um, continuing to pray for us. And uh, thank you for just being who you are. And we'll see you the next time. God bless you. Bye, everybody.